simplest techniques that you can tie on when you're either you're beginning crappy fishing or you just want a relaxing day out on the lake not having to worry about much but just casting your line out waiting for that cork to go under this technique can be very very impactful on any day on the water you can even use this technique with forward facing sonar if that's how you like to fish but this technique is especially great for just scanning for brush piles and figuring out what depth they're at with your 2d sonar setting your slip cork to that depth and casting over that brush pile and pulling in those big old slabs so in today's video we're going to be going over the simplest way to rig up a slip cork so the next time that you're out on the water you're able to rig this up and use it to its fullest potential so the first thing obviously you need a rod now you know i have two of these six six ugly stick crappy edition shakespeare rods you know there's nothing to write home about about these rods it's just a decent rod now i do recommend you know six six plus for a slip court that way you can throw it out 20 to 30 feet without an issue but if you have a smaller rod it really is not going to make that much of a deal uh, as far as line goes i'm still going to run four pound test line i just feel like they're going to be more line shy with a slip cork you know using minnows or a jig than they are putting the jig on top of their head so i do you still use four pound test but you know six to eight pound test is just fine i use vicious line i got a 500 reel on this rib, a rod that don't really matter it's not gonna catch you the fish the, 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 the rig is gonna catch you the fish so the essential parts of a slip cork honestly start with a cork and what is a slip cork basically normal corks you put on your line and they attach to your line directly and they stay in that one position that you put on the line now with a slip cork what's going to happen is this cork is going to be on your line and it's going to be able to move freely. So I'll show you that in just a second. But what you need are bobber stoppers. You can get rubber bobber stoppers or you can use the string bobber stoppers. The rubber bobber stoppers are a lot easier to use in my opinion. Obviously you need some kind of slip cork. Now this is just a cheap uh, $1.51 from Walmart you buy you can get wooden ones, plastic ones, styrofoam ones. Uh, I enjoyed this one just because I believe the wooden ones kind of tangle me up a little bit more. And you need a split shot. Now this is a pretty beefy one, size three split shot. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll show you what that does. And then obviously a hook. If you're using minnows, get some bait hooks. I'm going to put a number... A 164 with a six aught uh, eagle claw hook on mine. So to start off, you're gonna run a bobber stop. Very very simple to do, especially with these rubber ones. The string ones are kind of the same way. You just got to trim them. So you take your line and you run it through the little wire they got. And then you just pull the bobber stop up and that's all she wrote simple as that you want to do you want to pull your bobber stop up just to give you room to work with now on this particular uh, slip cork both ends of it actually come out so the way to rig it is to take both of those ends out and you want to put one on at a time which I mean, you could do it with a cork, but it's a lot easier just to take it off and do these. So you'll put one, one with it facing this way, and then you're gonna flip the other one so it's facing that way. And we'll put this one on. So you've got your middle of your cork, and you've still got your slip, uh, your bobber stop up there. So now you take your cork and you're going to put it back on the line, which you just split them up and then it's got a slot to go on the line. So you just put it in that slot. 
and then you put your plastic pieces back in their homes. So now this cork is on the line, but it can move freely. And that's what makes a slip cork pretty much, you know, more, it, it's a lot more effective to use a slip cork than it is a regular cork. Because say right now I've got this set at probably one foot. So when I throw it out there, this cork's gonna go to one foot and the bobber stop is gonna stop it. Now I can put this bobber stop anywhere on my line. I can even put it in the spool itself and it's still fine. I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing it too far in there, but you know, from anywhere from 12 to zero foot, you're able to set this. I mean, you can set it deeper if you want to. So the next thing you want is a split shot. Now you can tie a barrel swivel here and you know, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I just, I don't have any in my tackle box right now, but you can put a barrel swivel just to give it a little bit more weight. That's why I'm using a size three. So, I mean, put the split shot on, kind of self-explanatory. You put it between the line, then you crimp it down. I know I shouldn't use my teeth, but we already gonna get dentures eventually, so. So you've got bobber stop, slip cork, split shot. Now the last thing to do is to put on either your bait hook for minnows, which I do recommend, like minnows on a slip cork are very, very good. But I'm hard headed and use jigs, so. We're just gonna tie a really quick improved clinch knot. And that is our rig. Let's check it out real quick. And kind of explain everything to you. So bobber stop, slip cork, split shot, which the split shot does need to come down. I like to have them probably about, about 10 inches away from my hook. So we've got jig hook, split shot, slip cork, bobber stop. And the way, the best way to set this up, if you're scanning a brush pile, now, I mean, you can use these on docks, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. This is really good for open water, like brush piles and even bridges sometimes. But if you're scanning a brush pile, you're in 15 feet of water, you see a brush pile that peaks at seven to eight feet up. So you've got this water column Brush piles at seven feet. The max height of that brush pile is seven feet. Okay, and then you're at 15 feet of water. How much water is left there? Five, two, come on. You got eight feet of water left. So, if those fish are on top of that brush, which they should be this time of year, or you know, any, pretty much any time they're gonna be on top of the brush and you don't want to be in the brush anyway so if that brush pile peaks at seven feet and you're in that you're in 15 feet of water you need to set your slip cork at eight feet or probably seven and a half feet so the easiest way to do this you have a six six rod a seven foot rod i'll take my hook and actually clip it on the back of my butt and i'm gonna take that slip cork you gotta make sure your end of your rod is completely straight. Then I'm gonna take my bobber stopper and I'm gonna go all the way to the top of my rod. Now that is essentially gonna give me six and a half feet. So wherever I throw, my bait is gonna be at six and a half feet. Now I did say seven, about seven and a half feet. So what all we got to do is take it off the end and let out about a foot of line. So we let out just a little bit of line. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we take our bobber stop and move it up. 
and that is going to be perfectly seven and a half feet. So now you just wind it up and that bobber stop is right here on my line. I can cast this anywhere and this bobber stop is going to go through all these guides perfectly fine. And wherever this cork is, this cork is going to come up until it hits that bobber stop. And when it hits that bobber stop, guess what? We're at eight feet, seven and a half feet, give or take. And that's going to be right on top of that brush pile. So that minnow or jig is going to be sitting right on top of their head. And they're going to come up, they're going to grab it, and you're going to have you a nice fish sandwich. So hopefully, I mean, this is a very simple rig, but like I said, it can get complicated. Like you can do a lot of amazing things with a slip cork. Uh, you're able to control the depth, especially with forward-facing sonar. You can cast it out and actually control the depth without a bobber stop. That, that's a little more complicated, and I would, I hope one day I'm able to show y'all if I get a, a GPS unit, I can record the screen. But until then, take my word for it. If you're fishing summertime brush piles, get you a dozen for a couple dozen of minnows, some crappy man jigs, put you on a slip cork, put that limit in the boat.